Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 7th of December 2020 and the time has just gone 11.48 GMT. And it's been a fairly negative start to the European trading session. Uh, essentially, the big stories of the last couple of days have been there is still no deal between the UK and the European Union in relation to the future relationship uh, which will kick in to kick in uh, in January. So it's kind of, you know, it's some people are not surprised by this. Others thought there was at least some sign of positive hope um, at the back end of last week. But um, w w it, there's continues to be discrepancies, particularly over, over in the area of fishing. Uh, it was announced earlier on today that if progress isn't made between the two sides, uh, that, you know, progress will be need to make need to be made have been made today in order for for further talks to carry on this week. Uh, so that, that's been the kind of main uh, issue hanging over uh, European stock markets. It's also put a lot of pressure on the British pound, not surprisingly. Uh, also playing into the mix, um, slightly increase in tensions between the US and China. Uh, it's understood that the US government is looking to potentially target uh, a number of Chinese government officials uh, with sanctions in relation to their uh, alleged undemocratic uh, actions uh, in, in the Hong Kong elections. Uh, keep in mind the, the, the unemployment numbers of the, the US jobs report that we saw on Friday wasn't too hot, wasn't too great, but because the number itself wasn't particularly impressive, that sort of spurred on talk, to put, uh, spurred on chatter that we're going that we're, there's going to be pressure applied to U.S. politicians to try and push forward uh, with the proposed coronavirus relief package of over 900 billion dollars. But so that, that those the, the hopes of a stimulus package, some sort of stimulus package from the U.S. are still doing the rounds. Uh, so they're the kind of major uh, kind of um, the themes of the, of the session. Um, in relation to the UK EU, the European Union has a long history of striking a deal at the last minute. There are some people getting a bit more nervous now that you know we're in the kind of the first week of September. We're not too far away from the second week of sorry September December. You know the the transition period is going to end within just over three weeks. There are some people getting nervous that a, a no deal scenario is kind of you know is on is on, on the horizon. Others think take the view the European Union have a history of striking a deal at the last minute. So but that's likely to be the topic of the next few days. So keep an eye out for euros and indices. Keep an eye out for uh, the British pound. Uh, as always, with my video, I will run through the major events of the week. The week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights and under latest news and analysis. Um, so overnight, over the weekend, uh, we, we, had, we had some um, reasonably mixed China trade data. Uh, by and large, uh, China is, is emerging from the uh, from the kind of COVID nineteen economic crisis, by far the best. Um, in terms of in terms of numbers, what to keep an eye out for? Uh, Brown Foreman, uh, the maker of Jack Daniel's whiskey, they have second quarter numbers coming out tomorrow. Um, this has to be can this has to be absolutely kind of rock solid confirmed. Uh, Airbnb uh, are looking to IPO on Wednesday which will be at Wednesday, the 9th of December. Uh, we have a Bank of Canada interest rate decision meeting uh, on Wednesday too. You know, not, not a whole lot is going to be expected uh, on that front. Uh, Adobe have fourth quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. Uh, the European Central Bank, uh, this will be the one to kind of watch, um, will have their interest rate the interest rate decision meeting on Thursday. And we've already had a couple of hints that the European Central Bank are looking to going to expand their stimulus package uh, at this meeting. So this, so to an extent, a certain amount of that has, has that's been due in the rounds. Um, so traders be kind of be, be kind of questioning what sort of, of, of additional stimulus could we be look at, look to receive? To, could we look to hear about rather than are we going to hear any any at all. Keep in mind, I'll be touching on it later on in the video, but euro dollar has been fairly strong recently, something the European Union, uh, something the European Central Bank will not be too keen about. Um, so, And the move is largely down to, to do with a soft dollar rather than a strong euro. Um, but it's something that, you know, the European European Central Bank are luckily will likely want to address. Time game with trade talks, the EU summit. 
Um, we have a four quota numbers from Mikado, the online de uh, delivery uh, grocery company. They've obviously had a very good run of it uh, in the last few months because of the, the, the pandemic, but they've, their share price has come off the boil a little uh, just because with the prospect of a vaccine on the horizon, um, there's kind of growing belief that more money has been, there's going to grow in belief that people will kind of revert back to the high street and traditional grocers will, will do better in the near term. Uh, coming up also during on Thursday, uh, we have the UK industrial and, and manufacturing production numbers. And the last big corporate event or last big uh, event of the week is going to be a third quarter update from Rolls Royce. So as always, I'll run through the major indices, currency pairs and commodities. Starting off with the FTSE 100. Now, the FTSE 100 is a bit of an outlier in that uh, it's obviously the well-known uh, big British index, but because a large chunk of the companies that are in the FTSE 100, or at least some of the very big ones, have a relatively large exposure to international markets, they do a lot of trading around the world, a weak pound often helps those companies. So Diageo, the drinks company, or Unilever, the household goods company, or the big pharma companies like GlaxoSmithKline and AstraZeneca, um, those companies tend to have a large um, um, over stream of overseas revenue, softer sterling benefits those stocks. So on days when sterling is getting hammered, you often see a move higher in the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100 uh, today is as going to hit a nine month high on Friday. We're higher again today. So we're in a kind of solid upward trend the last few weeks and, and months. Uh, we're currently, you know, not too far away from the kind of 6,600 mark. You know, we're looking at levels last seen in early November, so, you know, nine-month highs. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at test, retesting this zone here, the highs of early March, which, as you can see, we had the, the COVID sell-off. We have the first kind of major bounce back into this zone here before we had another leg lower. So keep an eye out for this area here in around 6,891 to the upside. Uh, if we do manage to have a bit of a pullback, keep in mind, you know, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy in the last few months. So if we do drift lower from here, this zone here in around 6,400 could act as support. And if we go below that, we, we did see a support on a few occasions coming to play in around here, in around 6,258. And if we go below that, we could be like heading back down towards this red line here, the 200 moving average. We can see it acted nicely as support in early November. And that comes to the play just north of 6,000, at 6,200 and, sorry, 6,024. And notice how there's a few moving averages. The red line is a 200 moving average, the yellow is a 100 moving average, and the blue is a 50 moving average. And notice how they're all kind of converging in around here. So that if you do have a sizable um, move to the downside in the FTSE 100, it's likely we could see support coming out that area just because in the last few months, those metrics at various different times have been uh, seen, have often provided support in the past. Um, that's the FTSE is the sort of the outlier. We'll take a look now what's going on over in Germany. So, you know, it wasn't that long ago uh, at the back end, or I mean, this this time last week, um, we had the uh, we had the DAX, the German market here, not too far away from the highs of early September. So we're at multi-month highs. Keep in mind the highs that we saw in September were, were basically the highs we, since we the highest level we saw since late February as the market was just coming off uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis. And keep in mind, before the crisis really set in, the DAX was at an all-time high. So we're not, in the grand scheme of things, we're not a million miles from an all-time high on the DAX. Um, the last few days, you can broadly move into slightly lower, kind of rage bound, I would describe it, maybe a bit, a bit of bias to the downside. But keep in mind how much ground we've traveled uh, basically since late February. Uh, late October, so we're still very much in the upward trend. We need to kind of snap out of this out of this kind of zone here, kind of thirteen thousand two hundred, you know, between there and the highs of early September. So if we do break below uh, the highs of early September in around thirteen thousand four hundred and sixty-two, it could put us on track heading back up towards uh, levels last seen in late October in around thirteen thousand six hundred and forty-nine. There, you know, thirteen thousand five hundred, thirteen thousand. Um, 13,600. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the all time highs. Uh, if we moved lower from here, if we have a size of break below this area, we could be looking back down towards, generally speaking, they're going to 13,000 area at uh, the lows of, of kind of mid to late 
uh, November. We're just north of that in around 13,033. Uh, and if we have a move below that, we could head back down towards um, this zone here where the moving averages are, are, are um, converging. The 50 moving average being the blue line and the 100 moving average being um, the, the 100 moving average being the yellow line. And we can see in a few occasions in the last few months, both of those metrics at very different times have acted as support and resistance not too long ago. So if we do have a size of a correction, this zone could act as support. And if we do have a size of a correction, keep in mind, even if we go back, if we go back down towards this zone here, around 12,800, we'd still be in the upward trend because keep in mind, we came from south of 11,400 back in early, so back in late October. Take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting with the Dow Jones. So we saw record highs in the in the Dow Jones. You know, we're, we're given that, given where we are, we're expecting the cash market once it gets open, once the trading begins to open around thirty thousand one hundred and ten. We could be, you know, we're not too far away from from uh, from record highs. We could potentially see new record highs today. So we're still very much in the upward trend. Take a look at the price action the last few days. Kind of solid upward trend, higher highs and and higher lows. So if we press on higher from here, we could be looking towards, you know, 30,000, 200, 300, 400, so on and so forth. Because we are, you know, if you, get, if you hit new record highs, you'd be very much in uncharted territory. Uh, Eddie moves to the downside, 30,000, big psychological, big psychological number, might act as support. Um, and if we go below that, we could be looking back down towards the recent lows uh, of last week in around 29,770. Um, 29,636 and it's you know even if you take out the lows of, of last Monday in it uh, 29,461 would still be very much in that upper trend and a size of break below that could put 29,000 on the radar. It's a fairly similar situation with the S&P 500 in that records uh, records have been set recently and we're you know we, we could easily potentially see uh, further um, records on the on the horizon so if we kind of press on higher from here um, we could be looking at you know heading retaking 3700 um, th I think the market w w got up to our, our price got up to about 3705 today but that was obviously um, you know before cash trading began so we're still as you can see here we're still very much in the in the upward trend if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at, you know, targeting 3,710, 20, so on and so forth. You know, the, the, the more, the, the, the higher we move into, um, the more record highs we print, the more likely we are going to continue to see record highs. Now, if we do manage to drift a bit lower from here, we could look at finding support from the kind of the lows of late last week in around 3,656. And if you have a fairly sizable pullback, uh, the kind of 3,600 area itself might act as support. Um, that was the major indices cover. Take a look now at what's going on on euro dollar. I was talking about how the European Central Bank have a meeting this week, and it's likely that they're going to increase their stimulus package. Um, if you take a look at the price action, we can see that euro dollar has been in a solid upward trend the last few months. There was a bit of sideways trading uh, between August uh, and early November. And yet again, the kind of upward trend kicked in, largely to do with the weakness in the dollar. But nonetheless, um, the highs that we saw in the dollar, um, in, in, in euro dollar last week, were basically the highest that we, the highest that we saw um, since April, I believe, or April or May 2008. We, it, it was that the highest that we saw was basically April 2018. So we're talking, you know, well over two, you know, two and a half year highs. It's in a solid upward trend. If it continues to press on higher from here, um, we could be looking at heading up towards the kind of 123 zone. There, thereabouts. Because um, we're currently in at around one spot 2114, uh, or sorry, one spot 2111. If you continue to press on higher from here, keep an eye for one spot 23. So we're in a fairly solid upward trend. Any moves to the downside could find support from the kind of 120 area, or maybe just below that in here at one spot 1923. And even if you have a decent move below that, down towards the kind of 118 area could act as support too. Take a look now what's going on pound sterling. Sorry, pound dollar rather, I'll say that. So it wasn't that long ago, you know, only on Friday we saw the pound, uh, well, she briefly 
um, take out the highs of last December uh, and, th and the highs of last December were in, in around one spot 3515. That was on the back of the announcement that the Conservative Party had, had won a size of the majority at the UK general election in December 2019. So I very briefly trade above that. So it's in a clear you know, upward trend. Granted, Brexit uncertainty is back in, back in the radar. Uh, well, the UK has left the European Union, but uncertainty in relation to the future relationship between the UK and the European Union is back in the radar. Hence, why we have a fairly sizable sell-off. But keep in mind, if we draw a trend line between the lows of late September and the lows of early November, we don't get this trend line along here. We're still comfortably above that, that, that trend line. Like, like I said, uh, we've hit the highest level in over a year, um, not too long ago. Uh, the highs that we saw very recently were basically the highs that were last seen um, in you know May 2018. So we're talking you know over kind of like over two and a half year highs. So the trend is still very much to the ups, ups, upside. If we continue the press on higher from here, we could be looking at you know retesting 134, retaking 134 could put the uh, the kind of the recent highs on the radar in around one spot 35, 39. And if you go beyond that. We then have to go ahead, you know, we, we could then be looking at heading up towards, you know, the kind of 136 area, you know, which hasn't was last seen in May, uh, kind of early May 2018. Uh, to the downside, even even if you kind of have a fairly sizable um, move move lower, we you know we could be heading heading back down towards the, uh, the the mid November lows in around one, which is in around one spot, uh, one spot 3106. And if we go below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards the kind of the 130 area. Coming on now, last into commodities, starting off with um, gold. So basically, gold has had a fairly negative run about the last few weeks and months. So you can see it's been in a fairly downward downward trend the last few weeks. Basically, since about early for the last month, so it's been in a fairly clear downward trend. Uh, and that ties in with the kind of broad negative move we've seen between the all-time highs in August and then it kind of traded sideways into late October. Aggressive move lower recently. And in fact, the lowest that we saw last only only a week, one week ago uh, were the lowest levels seen since early July. Now, the market managed to kind of push on higher, rebound, recoup some of the losses that it incurred. But notice how this area here in around 1848, 1850, which acted nicely as support on a few occasions, has appeared to have been acting as resistance now. So we, we rebounded, pulled off, uh, moving off of the recent lows, but at the same time, we failed to kind of take out an area of previous support, which is potentially now acting as new resistance. If we can't retake that level, we, see, we could see the market turning over on itself yet again. Heading back down towards 1800 or well, 1803 is the daily moving average. 1800 um, is kind of the next big kind of you know number to keep an eye out, keep an eye out for on the, on the downside. And if you go below 1800, we could be looking at re retaking the recent lows in around 1764. And if you take out that, we will be looking at printing at new multi-month lows, and that could take us back down towards 1747. Um, a move to the upside if you take out 8, 1850. We could re retest this blue line here, the fifth day moving average in at 1879. And if we go beyond that, up to, we could be looking any back up towards 1900 or just north of it in at 1911. This yellow line here, the 100 day moving average. And lastly, I'll take a look at what's going on on the oil market. I'll take a look at the crude oil, uh, the crude oil Brent cash contract. So the oil market, um, only on Friday just gone, uh, hit a fresh nine-month high. Basically, that was on the kind of the announcement that OPEC Plus um, are going to in introduce production cuts, or but they're, they're going to roll back on production cuts, but those the, the rollback won't be anywhere near as steep as originally planned, which wasn't an, an entire surprise um, if you're kind of watching the news uh, for the last week or so. But nonetheless, they're keeping output relatively constrained. Traders are looking further down the line and going, there's a vaccine, the vaccines are in the pipeline. You know, the, the world economy could look very different three, six months down the line. Therefore, demand for the likes of oil, uh, in theory, should be higher. So those a combination of the of those few factors has set oil really move higher the last few weeks. So it's, in a, it's, it's been pushing higher recently. We're, cur we're currently in around $48.66. If you continue the press on higher from here, 
we could be looking at targeting 50 bucks at the next big psychological number. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at look, retesting the, the highs of early March in around 54 spot 28. And this is when I was beginning its fairly brutal descent. Uh, it fell down to, you know, we had a fairly aggressive sell off late February, early March. We had a rebound up to, back up towards a 54 spot 28 uh, before then having another aggressive move to the downside. Um, so keep an eye for that level. If you do manage to drift a bit lower from here, support could, could be coming to play from this zone here in around 46 spot 81. A move below that could see his head back down towards $45 a barrel. You know, that area was acted as a bit of a kind of consolidation zone in the last few months. And even if, 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 even if, if you go below that, we could like heading back towards to the 100 moving average, this yellow line here, which acted nicely as support in middle in mid November, and that comes to play in at forty three dollars and fourteen cents. Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.